Hi friends, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our Easter story, going through our resurrection eggs. Today we're going to go through day number 10 and day number 11. Let's remember where we left our story yesterday. At the point where we are now, Jesus has been crucified on the cross. He is not alive anymore. Remember the Roman soldiers took a spear and pierced it into his side to make sure that he was not alive. Now, day 10 egg, it looks to you possibly through this screen, maybe white, it's kind of off-white, kind of a dirty white maybe. When I open it, inside is a clean white cloth. Let me read some verses to you from God's holy word that tell us what this is about. I am in the book of Matthew, which is the first book of the New Testament in chapter 27, verse 57. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. That means that he was a follower of Jesus. He loved God and loved Jesus very much. Going to Pontius Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. Friends, back in this time, when someone had died, when someone was not alive anymore, there were special things that had to be done in order for that person to be buried. And so this is what Joseph used to get Jesus's body ready to be buried. Now I want you to think for a minute about what this verse said. It said that Joseph was a very rich man and he was a disciple of Jesus. He loved Jesus. That's why he asked Pilate if he could be the one to take the body. He had cut this tomb out himself, and he wanted to be the one responsible for preparing Jesus' body for burial. Here's the cool thing about this. Little did Joseph know all of those special preparations that he would take in a few days he would find out would not even be needed. We're gonna to get to that part soon. Now the next egg we're gonna go through today <clears throat> is egg number 11. This is a bright pink egg. When I open it, looks just like a rock, rock you'd find outside. But what this symbolizes, what it stands for is the big, huge stone that was put in front of the opening of the tomb where Jesus was buried. Let me read this to you. This is some of my favorite part. We are again in the same book of Matthew, a few verses down. So we read, Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean cloth, placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. So he put this huge rock in front of it. Now, Pontius Pilate also ordered some of his Roman soldiers to stand there and guard that tomb. And the Bible says they even put a special Roman seal on the edges of that big stone so that there would be no way someone could come and roll it away. See, Pontius Pilate and the Romans were kind of afraid that Jesus' disciples or some of his friends would come and try to steal the body. That's what they were afraid would happen. And those Roman soldiers who were ordered to stand guard, they were vigilant. That means they didn't sleep. They didn't even blink their eyes. They never took their eyes off that rock because they knew if someone tried to come and roll that stone away, they would be in big trouble. Friends, I want to show you something before we get to our egg tomorrow. This is what I want to end with today. 
when we think about the Easter story. Remember that we're talking about Jesus giving his life on the cross for us. I've drawn this little picture up for you. Right here. Let's imagine this little person is me or you or all of us. And imagine this is kind of a big cliff. On this side over here is God. So if we walk to the edge of this cliff, there's a huge gap there that we cannot fill. I, me, you, all of us, we cannot get to God. We cannot have a friendship with God because of our sin. sin. Our sin separates us from God. Now, when Jesus gave his life on the cross, what he actually did, he made a way for us. I'm going to draw this on here. When he died on the cross, he made a way for us, me, you, all of us, to get to God and have a relationship or friendship with him. Friends, remember what sin is. Sin is anything that we think, say, or do that would hurt God's heart. We are all sinners. God's word says we are all sinners and that none of us can be close to God without the blood of Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood, his blood washes us white as snow. And the way that we tell Jesus that we say yes to him, we believe that he's the son of God. We believe he died on the cross for our sins. We believe that we need him to have a relationship or a friendship with God. And we can just say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I believe you died for me. Will you come in and wash my sin away out of my heart and make me white as snow so that I can have a friendship with you and a relationship with God? And what that means is, remember, friends, all of us, everything in this world, at some point will not be alive anymore. But the hope that we can have in Jesus is when we leave this earth that we could spend forever in heaven with God. That is what Jesus did for us. That's what he bought for us with his blood on the cross. He bought us an eternal, that means a forever home, a forever place, a forever friendship with God. I want to leave you with that thought today. I can't wait for you to come back tomorrow because tomorrow is the best part of the story. We'll see you later.